Storms are firing up on the dual Doppler 5000 radar. I'll show you the biggest threats and how long they last. And that severe weather bringing a tree down on a home and dropping hail. We'll show you new images of storm damage. Frustration among Durham residents is growing after eight people have been shot in three days. We'll show you where each investigation stands. Then our chances are going up to see the northern lights in North Carolina. We talk live with a NASA ambassador about the best hours and ways to watch. Right now at 7 o'clock, we are following some storms moving through the triangle. We, uh, we're keeping a close eye on the radar for you tonight. Thank you for joining us. I'm Dan Haggerty. And I'm Ashley Rowe. Let's look at the damage that this system is already causing in Spring Lake. You see mm. that the trees are getting down on homes. The roofs have been ripped off of others. We have also seen hail in Wilson. Uh, we've got video sent to us by a viewer there in the middle monitor. We have live team coverage of this damage. And when we are in the clear, let's begin with meteorologist Kat Campbell in the WRAL Severe Weather Center. Kat? We don't have that much longer to go, Ashley. That's the good news. This threat should be dying down right around sunset tonight. So just about an hour or so to go. We have a couple of strong storms to point out. And I did want to mention the southern sliver here of Hoke County on the south side of Rayford is under a severe thunderstorm warning until 730. Some strong wind gusts and hail will be possible right along the county line there in, in Hoke County. The severe thunderstorm warning 30 minutes to go. We also have a storm that's about to hit Elm City and and the south side of town in Rocky Mount. That one could have some small hail, not a severe thunderstorm warning on that at this point, but some heavy rain as is going to hit. And we just had a shower hit the station here. The heavy rain came down. It was a nice downpour, but it moved out very quickly. We've got one more shower that's moving through Raleigh and one that's going to pass through Wake Forest. And then after that, things should quiet down here in the triangle. A severe thunderstorm watch remains in effect for our southern counties through 9 o'clock tonight. And I think really this threat should be ending close to 8 o'clock of a closer look at what to expect as we head toward Mother's Day weekend coming up. All right, Kat, thank you. And our team coverage continues with Carly Haynes live in the WRL Storm Tracker. Carly, what are you seeing right now? Actually, bright and sunny where we are right now, but we're on 95 heading south towards Spring Lake where we've been hearing a lot of the reports about that storm damage. I want to show you video from photojournalist uh, Michael Joyner who got some of this. Uh, this is near Romy Road. The roof of a mobile home peeled off in that storm, uh, that roof lying next to the home. And then nearby on Odell Road, a large tree toppling onto a roof. It looks like a pine tree just covering it. We're also getting reports of large trees uprooted and toppled all over that same Spring Lake neighborhood. This happened a couple of hours ago when those wind gusts were coming through those southern counties. So we're going to have more on the damage that we've seen just today at 10 and 11 tonight. Okay, Carly, thank you for your reporting live in the WRL Storm Tracker. Now let's get over to Lena Tillette in the WRL Live Center with a check on traffic. Lena? Yeah, Ashley, uh, maybe someone you know or you got stuck in that significant traffic on I-40 near Garner as a result of a 10-car crash. Happy to report that that is now clear. This is a still image of the roadway here, I-40. The exit is 306 in Garner. It is clearly clear here. I want to show you the video of how it looked a couple of hours ago. This is a ground image here. You see uh, how significant the delays were. Crews, it took them about an hour to clear up all of the crashes that happened here. And as a result, there were significant delays there on I-40. Again, it is now clear. Drivers are now able to go through smoothly. Back to you. Quite a Friday commute, Lena. Thank you. Speaking of the roadways, crews working to repair a road here in Wake Forest after a water main break caused this sinkhole there. Man, what a mess. Sky 5 over that scene. This is Common Oaks Drive, not far from Capitol Boulevard. Water officials say that they're still working right now to figure out exactly what caused this break. They can't say it's been repaired. Crews will have a fix. Uh, will have to fix a 130 foot stretch of asphalt, though, before reopening that road. It has been quite a violent couple of days in Durham. Just look at all these different scenes here. Eight people shot in 26 hours. It all started Wednesday night when four people were shot at an apartment complex. The most recent just after midnight yesterday when two people were shot. WRL's Monica Casey spoke with residents who are frankly fed up. 
Durham residents are frustrated by recent violence. People tell me they don't feel safe riding the bus or in their homes with bullets flying through their windows. This is the inside of a woman's home in the village at Auburn Apartments. Her wall has three bullet holes and shattered glass is scattered on the bed where her daughter was sleeping. Police found one victim of that shooting in the complex. Gunshot wound, 801 East Woodcross Parkway. Broadcast of I radio traffic shows the second victim was found a half mile away. Durham PD just advised there's another gunshot wound on Barbie that just came out of the woods. Hours earlier, police responded to a woman at McDougald Terrace around 540. Gunshot wound, 903 South Plum Street. And an argument among a group of men escalated to them firing at each other at the bus station at 3.30 in the afternoon. Yeah, we got one female inside that hit her head when she passed out. Candace Herring is at that station about every other day. This is the transportation that everybody needs. Are you frustrated about this? Actually, yes, because... Then and now everybody is also worried about if we're going to have to start back paying. And so now, if when you have if you have to pay, and then you're riding on a public service and it's not safe, that to me does not add up. In Durham, Monica Casey, WREL News. Yeah, you can really sense their frustration. Fortunately, everyone survived yesterday's shootings. In Wednesday night's shooting, one man was killed and a woman had life-threatening injuries. Two men have been arrested for that quadruple shooting on Wednesday night in Durham. Both Yeltsin Sinto Orozco and William Sanchez Vasquez are charged with first-degree murder, assault with a deadly weapon, and firing into an occupied dwelling. They faced a Durham County judge today. Both have no bond. I wish we were done talking about these types of stories, but uh, again, police investigating another shooting. This one in an apartment complex in North Raleigh overnight. You can see six bullet holes in the door of one of the units there. This is on Shanda Drive. Police responded to a report of shots fired about 2 o'clock in the morning, and hours later our crews heard popping noises, which police described as, as a special tool to keep people safe. Um, they say they never fired. A person showed up at Duke Raleigh Hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. It's unclear if anyone is in custody. Back in the Live Center now, I'm Lena Tillette with a breaking update on the UNC airplane crash at RDU that happened late last month. The pilot was severely injured. The passenger, who was a UNC doctor, was also injured but suffered minor injuries. The NTSB just released this preliminary report of what happened. First of all, take a look at the scene here. You'll likely remember these images, the plane crashing on April 24th. At the time, air traffic control said that the plane was clear to land, then bounced on the runway before it began a missed approach, started a left turn, stalled, hitting the ground. Investigators now say that review of surveillance video and photographs reveal that the airplane hit the ground with its left wingtip and nose almost simultaneously. Back in the live center, I also want to show you something else that was significant from uh, this NTSB report here. So they have not been able to interview the pilot because of his severe injuries, but they have talked to the passenger, uh, Dr. Paul Kilminski, and he said that the airplane was rolling and tobogganing as if we were descending a hill on the snow during the final approach. He also said the airplane touched down twice, after which the pilot appeared to turn and roll the airplane left as if to take off again. He also said that he was getting no communication from the pilot as all of this was unfolding, so he was in the dark about what was happening. Again, this is the preliminary report. They have not yet interviewed the pilot. We'll get more, I'm sure, after that. Back to you. That is some terrifying detail. Thanks, Lena. Raleigh police want you to be vigilant as they warn of new scam growing in popularity. Officials say this is actually tied to Bitcoin. People are getting calls saying they have missed jury duty or from someone claiming to be computer tech support. Scammers will often give you a QR code, phone number, or link to resolve the issue. Another red flag, no government agency or business is going to ask for cryptocurrency as payment and in advance. So the Canes, they left it all on the ice last night. It still wasn't enough, though. They, did, they came out aggressive in Game 3 at PNC Arena, playing again at home against the New York Rangers. They scored first. 
but they didn't score last, which was the big one. Uh, they actually didn't score again after that first goal until about um, uh, two minutes or so left in regulation. They tied it 2-2. They pushed the game into overtime, but that didn't last long. The Rangers, boy, they have a commanding 3-0 lead now over the Canes in this series. WRL's Luis Fernandez here now live in the studio. So, man, the odds, Luis, against the Canes, it, not that it's impossible, but a tough road ahead. It, the Stanley Cup playoffs are a bit of a beast. Coming behind from 3-0 deficits only happened once. That was in the MLB. For the Stanley Cup, though, there have been 209 instances of a team going down 3-0 in a series. Only nine teams have forced a game seven, and of those nine, only four ended up winning the series as a whole. The 1942 Toronto Maple Leafs over the Red Wings in the Stanley Cup final, the 75 Islanders over the Penguins, the 2010 Flyers over the Bruins, and the 2014 Kings over the Sharks. They're doing the math, carry the one, da da da. 1.9% of teams go from being down 3-0 to winning the best of seven series. The Rangers haven't lost yet in the postseason. They're 7-0, but they did lose four games in a row one time during the regular season this year. To quote Miracle Max from The Princess Bride, the Hurricanes are mostly dead. There's a big difference between mostly dead and all dead. Mostly dead is slightly dead alive. <laughs> Some think a win right now seems inconceivable. But ah, we'll, uh, he's got it. We'll he keeps see. it alive. We'll see. <laughs> oh, hey, fingers crossed. Go Canes, Lewis. Thank you. And we'll all be watching to see if the Canes can do it tomorrow night at 7 o'clock at home at PNC Arena. <laughs> I love all the Princess Bride references. Don't miss WRL's exclusive post-game coverage after every playoff game. We'll have a full report from PNC Arena alongside former Hurricane Shane Willis. That's all tomorrow night at 1125. So a phenomenon rarely seen in the South will be visible in North Carolina overnight. We are talking about the Northern Lights. What you need to know if you're hoping to catch a glimpse that's coming up. Plus, it's a big graduation weekend for so many across our area. Some law grads already walking the stage today with some encouragement from our state's governor. Overnight, some of us could catch a glimpse of the northern lights. A solar storm could trigger the auroras farther south than we've seen in nearly 20 years. And our forecast is going to cooperate. Meteorologist Kat Campbell says it should be clear enough to see it. Music to my ears and music to yours as well. NASA Ambassador Tony Rice, thank you so much for being here to talk about this with us. It's exciting. You and I spoke yesterday. Mm -hmm. At the time, you were saying, oh, we might be able to see a little bit of a hazy green off in the distance. What are you expecting now? Because the forecast changes. A lot has changed. And uh, you know, forecasting the weather here on Earth is pretty challenging. It's even more challenging in space. It's because we have so little assets out there. That's changing a lot. We're putting more uh, missions up there. But since we talked yesterday, the arrival is, is happening a little bit earlier for that geomagnetic storm. And it looks like it's going to be a lot stronger. We've been sitting in the Weather Center watching some of the metrics that are coming out of Europe and, and the United States as well. And they're off the charts. We've not seen this level of, it's called the planetary index. It measures the amount of energy that's up in the atmosphere. And that's what's exciting those atoms up there and creating those beautiful colors. We're looking right now at a map of the United States and, and explain to us what we're seeing. It looks like Raleigh is in that possible visible category. So it really comes down to where in the sky you might be able to see things. That very likely visible means that those beautiful colors are gonna be directly overhead, thus easier to see. The possibly visible is going to be a little bit lower in the uh, in the sky, closer to the horizon. And that line down at the very bottom, that's where we were yesterday. That's what we were expecting yesterday, where we'd see just a little bit of greening to the uh, to the to along the horizon. So things have improved quite a bit. Okay, so when and where is it best to look? And that's the what remains to be seen. We really don't know yet. Uh, one of the forecasts, uh, it's a uh, almost day-old forecast at this point, says around 4 a.m. But we're seeing some of this arrive a little bit earlier than we expected. So I'm going to say as soon as those clouds clear out there, which Kat is telling me is going to happen you know, soon after sunset, I would go out and start taking a look. I'm going to be looking all night because this could be 
pretty interesting, and it doesn't happen very often. I imagine the darker the conditions, the better. You know, Absolutely. if you've got a lot of light pollution, it could make things Same a Same rule apply here that would apply to meteor showers or whatever. Yep. You want to look in dark skies. You know, I was looking online and seeing that in some areas, in other instances of this, it's had an impact on the power grid. Are we at risk of that here? That's something we really need to worry about here. Uh, there's a protective, like, donut around the Earth's uh, atmosphere, and that keeps uh, uh, normally this kind of energy away. The upper parts of that donut, you know, they're not protecting up there. So uh, where we see those kind of risks to the power grid and things like that, South Africa, up in Northern Europe, but around here in, in Central North Carolina, we don't have to worry about that. Okay, all right, so you heard it from Tony Rice. <laughs> Let's look, once the skies start to clear, the, the sky turns dark, and keep your eyes peeled to the skies. All right, thank you. It's not, a, it's not a school night or anything. You can stay up late, set the alarm, wake up. Uh, unfortunately, we saw mostly clouds throughout the day today. Hopefully those part way. Uh, Kat, it's going to be kind of lower in the skyline as well, I think you were saying earlier. Mm -hmm. So if you have some big trees near you, you might want to find a different spot. Exactly. Isn't Tony Rice the best helping us out with all of this? You know, one thing I want to let you know, Mike Mays, myself, Tony, we're all going to be watching this for you tonight. If we see signs that things are really taking off, we're going to be in touch. You know, Mike Mays will be on air at 10 and 11 o'clock tonight on WRL News. We'll be in touch with our digital team. Download the WRL weather app. We'll be in touch with them to maybe send out a push notification if things really erupt and it should be a uh, good viewing condition. So we'll be watching that for you tonight. But let's talk about the weather. We got to focus in on some storms. The southern tip of Hope County. We've got a storm imminent right now. Some very heavy rain, a lot of lightning, and there could be some hail in that storm as well. Most of it's going to pass to the south, and that's going to be headed for Lumberton here over the next 30 minutes. We also have a storm that previously had some lightning as it approached Rocky Mountain, Elm City. It's now moving through Edgecombe County. No more lightning, but a brief period of heavy rain expected there and a few showers left just north of Raleigh. But things are really starting to quiet down, and we told you all day we expected this threat to end by 8 o'clock. We're still on track for that. Take a look at some of the hail reported earlier. This was our largest hail report that we saw come in from Garland, 1.75 inch diameter. Thank you for to Arthur for sharing that picture with meteorologist Mike Mays. Still a severe thunderstorm watch for our southern counties through 9 o'clock. I expect that that will end early. The cold front is pushing to the south and east, and behind it, it will be less humid and comfortable for Mother's Day weekend 74 for the high tomorrow. There is the possibility of a shower tomorrow night and then Sunday. It's a beautiful Mother's Day dry, partly cloudy 79 for tomorrow. Let's take a look here at future cast so you get a better idea of the timing for a few showers. It's mainly confined to our northern counties from the triangle north after sunset about or after seven o'clock through about midnight is when we could see the rain and then we've got more sunshine Sunday morning, partly cloudy for Sunday afternoon. It ends up being a beautiful Mother's Day for any outdoor plans that you may have with mom this weekend. Maybe you're bringing her to the beach 75 at Ocean Isle tomorrow, 74 at Wrightsville Beach, Emerald Isle, 72 degrees. And by Sunday, it warms up a little bit at the coast. It'll be closer to 80 at Wrightsville Beach and uh, Emerald Isle will be in the mid 70s on Sunday. Here's your seven day forecast looking good over the weekend for the most part and quiet on Monday. As we get into Tuesday and Wednesday, that's going to be our next opportunity for rain and thunderstorms. We'll keep an eye on any severe weather potential, but as of right now, it's not looking as hot and humid as what we saw earlier this week, and that's what helped to energize the atmosphere this week. So hopefully we just get some beneficial rain that we need next week. Just a little bit of time left to go in tonight's threat for storms, and then things should be quiet for the remainder of the night. All right. Thank you, Kat. The home made famous in the movie Bull Durham is up for sale. For how much and what it looks like now, coming up. Governor Cooper offering some words of wisdom and advice and congratulations today to the students at UNC School of Law in their graduation ceremony. Our complicated, messy, and beautiful world is waiting for you, and it will be better because you are there. Congratulations to all of you. Now go get them. Go Heels. Go get them. So uh, today's ceremony uh, in that Carmichael Arena there packed 
Oh, very cool. Cooper encouraged the law school grads to be problem solvers and community builders. Congratulations to all of them. The ceremony, just one of many happening in our area this weekend. In fact, the triangle will be very busy. UNC's general graduation ceremonies are tomorrow. The university added new safety measures we've been telling you about this year. Because of uh, these situations here, the pro-Palestinian protests on campus in the recent weeks, on Duke's campus, the university there, their commencement ceremony is Sunday. Jerry Seinfeld is going to be giving the address. We reached out to Duke about some possible security changes, but we haven't heard back from them. WRL.com has your guide to all the college graduations this weekend. You'll find where and when, whether you want to attend or maybe you just want to avoid some traffic. <laughs> Avilo Airlines is now running direct flights from RDU to uh, uh, where you're looking live right now, to yeah. Albany. The budget airline has tickets for about $69 one way. The flights operate Mondays and Fridays. Velo also doubled flight options to Rochester and to Manchester, New Hampshire to four times a week. It now operates Thursday through Monday. The house from the movie Bull Durham is up for sale and it's worth a pretty penny. Oh yeah, so the home on Mangum Street was put on the market this week, $1.6 million. Uh, of course, the house made famous in the popular 1988 movie Bull Durham. It does have some fresh paint now, new <laughs> wallpaper as well. I don't know if you caught the wallpaper there in some of the shots. But that famous bathtub apparently on the first floor still remains. You know, if you know, you know. 1.6, mm -hmm. huh? The U.S. Golf Association's new headquarters in Pinehurst will soon be open to visitors. Uh, this Friday night view is pretty spectacular, isn't it? A grand opening was held today at the new facility. The new building will include the World Golf Hall of Fame. The grand opening comes ahead of next month's U.S. Open being hosted at Pinehurst number two. It's a big day today. It's a, it's a dream come true, a vision coming to reality, a seven acre 42,000 square foot USGA facility right here in the cradle of American golf. Very cool. It's full of historic artifacts, including a signed outfit worn by Payne Stewart at the 1999 U.S. Open. The exhibit will be free and open to the public starting May 15th. Very cool. Thanks for making WRL your choice for local news on this Friday. Our next newscast is at 10 o'clock on Fox 50 and at 11 on WRL. Have a great night and a fantastic weekend. Keep watching WRAL News over the air channel 34 and Spectrum channel 1257.